Former New Japan Pro Wrestling star Tama Tonga reportedly is set to join WWE. An update on if Drew McIntyre has signed a new contract with WWE amid rumours on social media that he's put pen to paper on a new WWE deal. We got the ratings for this past Saturday's AW Collision. Cody Rhodes says he's hunting down the bloodline last night on Monday Night Raw. TNA are looking to go live every single week for their Impact television show. Could they also be heading to NXT's former home of Full Sail University to shoot their TV show live out of every week. Drew McIntyre addresses his injury concerns on Raw last night. CM Punk is announced as part of the DLC for WWE 2K24. We got the ratings for Friday's edition of SmackDown. We got a new role for Rob Fee in WWE. The Rock is going to be appearing on several upcoming episodes of Friday Night SmackDown and we have the ratings of AW Rampage on TNT. Hey guys, welcome back to Rest News 365. Hope everyone is doing very well. As always, there are plenty of news stories to get into in the world of professional wrestling. Let's start off talking about Tama Tonga reportedly heading to WWE, a name that WWE has been interested in for quite some time. The multi-time IWGP Tag Team Champion is indeed headed to WWE per a report. According to Dave Meltzer of F4W Online, WWE sources confirmed to the outlet that Tama Tonga is indeed headed to the sports and entertainment behemoth. Now, Tama spent a total of 14 years of New Japan Pro Wrestling, and in January, after capturing the Never Openweight Championship at Wrestle Kingdom, he told the media in Japan that it would be his final month with New Japan Pro Wrestling. He explained that he wants to be with his family more and does not want to continue missing out on his children growing up in addition to wanting to be with his wife. His final match in New Japan took place at the New Beginning in Sapporo. He teamed with his brother Tanga Loa as they fell in defeat to El Fantasmo and Tama and Tanga's younger brother Hiku Leu. Now Sean Rossap of Fightful Select has indeed confirmed this story as well saying that it looks like WWE has landed a major free agent. Today the Wrestling Observer reported that long time New Japan pro wrestler Tama Tonga is headed to WWE. Fightful was able to confirm that is the expected move barring unforeseen circumstances. WWE has maintained interest in Tama for nearly a decade and the two sides have had many talks over the past several years. So Tama Tonga is headed to WWE. What do you think the plans are going to be for him in WWE? Where do you think he's going to go? Is he going to go to the main roster? Is he going to go to NXT? Is he going to link up with the Good Brothers, who we have seen in NXT recently? Is he going to link up with AJ Styles as part of the feud of LA Knight on the road to WrestleMania? What do you think is going to happen with Tama Tonga? Let me know your thoughts about it in the comments section below. Now, there's been rumors flying around today on social media that finally, after months of speculation, Drew McIntyre has put pen to paper on a brand new WWE contract. Well, not so fast on those rumours. According to Sean Rossap of Fightful Select, rumours have emerged online that Drew McIntyre has signed a new contract with WWE. When Fightful Select asked, they were simply told, quote, not accurate, end quote. As of now, Drew McIntyre's deal expands past WrestleMania 40 in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, as injury time was added on to his existing deal. Fightful have been told both sides do hope to continue working together, so it's a matter of if... I guess, not if, but when, McIntyre does put pen to paper. But as of right now, no, he has not signed a new contract, despite the rumours online. Let's talk about the ratings for Saturday's edition of AEW Collision on TNT. And after a week off, thanks to NBR, NBA All-Star Weekend, some wondered whether AEW Collision would lose some momentum rating-wise when the show returned to its 8pm time slot this past Saturday. Unfortunately for AEW, the answer appears to be yes. WrestleNomics is reporting that Saturday's Collision drew 385,000 viewers on TNT and a 0.11 in the coveted 18-49 demographic. The numbers represented a decent drop from two weeks ago with total viewership falling 22% from 491,000 total viewers while the 18 to 49 was down 27% from a 0.15 when it comes to the quarter hour ratings, of course, these come courtesy of WrestleNomics. Shout out to them and be sure to subscribe to their Patreon. The quarter hours for Collision show a strong beginning and end with mixed results in the middle. The episode began with its high point in total viewership with a no disqualification match between Sammy Guevara and Powerhouse Hobbs, drawing 440,000 total viewers and a 0.12 in the 18 to 49. The rest of the match held up strong in quarter hour two, drawing 403,000 and a 0.12. The high 
high point of the show in the 18 to 49. Things took a drop though in quarter hour three when FTR versus Shane Taylor promotions match drew a show low of 339,000 total viewers and a 0.10 in the 18 to 49. Things stayed low in quarter hour four before rising up again for the first half of Malachi Black versus Brian Keith in quarter hour five with their singles match drawing 405,000 and a 0.11, the second highest quarter hour for total viewership and the third highest in 18 to 49 for the night. Things would dip again in quarter Quarter hour six, which drew 351,000, the second lowest quarter hour for total viewership, and a 0.10. Collision did rebound for its final two quarter hours, which featured the main event between Brian Danielson and Jun Akiyama. The start of the match in quarter hour seven drew 390 total thousand viewers and a 0.12, the second highest number in the 18 to 49 that night. Though the 18 to 49 dropped to a 0.11 in quarter hour eight, total viewership increased for the end of the match, drawing 395,000 viewers. So let me know your thoughts about those ratings, those numbers in the comments section below. Now let's go to Monday Night Raw. Last night and Paul Heyman's arrival on Raw was unexpected. What was even more unexpected, however, was Cody Rhodes going from being hunted by the bloodline to hunting the bloodline in the final minutes of the show. Halfway through the Raw main event, a match between Rhodes and Grayson Waller, Michael Cole confirmed that Paul Heyman was backstage and an interaction between Roman Reigns' wise man and the American Nightmare became inevitable. Heyman appeared during Rhodes' post-match celebration to address the challenge Rhodes issued to The Rock at Elimination Chamber on the uh, Grayson Waller effect in Perth, Australia. Surrounded not by the bloodline, but three supposedly suspended New York Police Department officers, Heyman pleaded with Rhodes to rescind his statements in that he was concerned for Rhodes' safety given his planned match against Roman Reigns at WrestleMania 40. Rage dipped from Rhodes' voice as he responded to Heyman's pleas. He refused to rescind his challenge, stating that ever since Johnson aligned himself with the bloodline, Rhodes had been thoroughly disillusioned. I am done. I am absolutely fed up with being nice, Rhodes cried. The segment exploded as Heyman's goon surrounded Rose, who easily floored all three as Heyman himself fled from the ring chaos. Heyman then pulled two phones, not one, but two phones from his pocket, using one to call Roman Reigns and the other to call Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Heyman did not have the opportunity to speak on those calls as Rhodes took to the mic again to bark at him. The bloodline isn't hunting me, Rhodes declared. I'm hunting the bloodline. Now, this statement starkly contrasts recent events in Rhodes' storyline, including his recent exchanges with Seth Rollins, who promised he would be Rhodes' shield between Rhodes' gratuitous beatdown of Heyman's NYPD cronies and his aggressive promise. One can only assume that The Rock will be adopting a more unhinged character going into WrestleMania, possibly opposite Cody Rhodes. Now, this is an interesting story when it comes to TNA and their future plans. TNA could be possibly broadcast live in the future. Now, no major wrestling company has gone through more of a change as of late than TNA Wrestling. They brought back their iconic branding at the beginning of the year. And in fact, on February 7, it was then announced that beloved company president Scott Demore had his contract terminated by Anthem, the parent company of TNA. Now it looks like TNA are looking to expand in terms of broadcasting. Speaking on Wrestling Observer Radio, Dave Meltzer has said that TNA have been looking at the possibility of finding a location to call home for live broadcasting each week. This is believed to have been in motion while Scott Demore was still present, as he and Lou D'Angeli and Ed Nordham had previously visited Full Sail University, the former home of NXT, to scout the venue for potential use. This is what Meltzer had to say, quote, One of the things they've been looking at is, and this is not going to happen anytime soon, but they want to go live. The idea is to go live and have a location where they go every Thursday and Full Sail University is one of the places they've talked about. There's probably other locations as well, which would be really tough because Orlando already has NXT every Tuesday. But Scott Demore, before he was ousted, Scott Demore, Lou D'Angeli and Ed Nordham went to Full Sail and scouted it out and that's where they wanted to go. It's unclear as to whether Demore's departure will impact, no pun intended, any plans, but at least under him, the idea was that the company would do the appropriate test towards the end of 2024 with the goal of getting a live broadcast up and running each week from 2025. Quote, the idea was under Demore, and it may be delayed, it may not. Some of the talent knows about this, would be maybe a few test runs towards the end of the year, and then the mentality was live 2025, and of course, with Demore, they may now uh, have 
have to scrap that idea. Now, Anthony Sassone, of course, coming in to replace Scott Demore as TNA president, may well impact proceedings following Anthem turning down Demore's bid to purchase the company. It's unlikely that he will make any return to the organization moving forward. However, some talent are still hoping. Now, Drew McIntyre was on Raw last night and he took the opportunity once again to mock CM Punk whilst reveling in his Elimination Chamber victory. Now, McIntyre making that appearance in an in-ring segment on last night's Raw, McIntyre touched on a variety of topics before being met by the World Heavyweight Champion Seth Rollins. McIntyre noted that he suffered a ruptured eardrum during the Elimination Chamber match, going on to joke that when someone in medical suggested he could perhaps risk miss WrestleMania 40, he had a retort at the ready, asking, quote, Who do you think I am, CM Punk? He pledged that he would absolutely not be letting any injury prevent him from taking on Seth Rollins on the grandest stage of them all. McIntyre went a step further, sitting down in the ring in a signature CM Punk pipe, pipe bomb style to continue to tout his WrestleMania 40 plans. Seth Rollins would then join McIntyre in the ring and Drew would deliver a logical concern to Rollins regarding his continued involvement with the bloodline pushing back that he would not be satisfied winning the World Heavyweight Championship with interference from the bloodline, referring to it as ruining my moment, Drew urged Seth to stay away from Cody Rhodes' Smackdown drama. So the question is, do you think that the bloodline gets involved in Drew McIntyre and Seth Rollins' World Heavyweight Championship match at WrestleMania 40? Let me know your thoughts about that in the comment section below. Now, moving to some sad news in the world of professional wrestling, as a founding member of the Four Horsemen, and one of the biggest heels from the territory era of wrestling, Ole Anderson, has sadly passed away. Ricky Morton shared the news of Anderson's death via his Instagram account yesterday evening, saying, quote, Rest in paradise, Ole Anderson, Morton wrote. You taught me so much in professional wrestling. You were tough as nails. You'll be missed, my friend. Now, Anderson, whose real name was Alan Robert Rogowski, was 81 years old. Following his wrestling career, Anderson worked as a booker for Georgia Championship Wrestling and Jim Crockett Promotions, notably beefing with Vince McMahon over the takeover of GCW in 1984. Eventually, Anderson would wind up as part of WCW's executive team, but kept to his word as far as McMahon goes, reportedly refusing to agree to participate in documentaries and WWE Hall of Fame presentations, still hanging on to the animosity stemming from McMahon's territory takeover. Anderson's spot as an original horseman next to Ric Flair, Tully Blanchard and Arn Anderson, managed by J.J. Dillon, was ultimately ceded to Lex Luger in 1987. He was also part of the Minnesota Wrecking Crew alongside his kayfabe brother Gene Anderson, Anderson, replacing Lars Anderson, also not related, in the group upon his departure from the territory. In 2007, it was reported that Anderson had been diagnosed with multiple sclerosis, although there is no word yet as to an exact cause of death. Of course, we wish everyone, his loved ones, his family, his friends, all the best in the future after the sad passing of Ole Anderson. Now, CM Punk, he had been on social media talking about whether he's going to be part of the WWE 2K24 video game, and indeed, he will. Now, ahead of 2K24 being released, a new list of DLC characters was announced last night on Monday Night Raw. Not only will CM Punk be making his triumphant return to WWE Gaming, another hotly anticipated addition to the game was confirmed. Jade Cargill will become a playable character in September of 2024. Now, names involved in this DLC pack include the likes of CM Punk, the Dudley Boys, Sandman, Terry Funk. In addition to that, Post Malone, Sensational Sherry, Mosh Thrasher, the Honky Tonk Man. Uh, you've also got Pat McAfee, Jay Cargill, Nia Jax, Michelle McCall, Carlito, Kyrie Sane, Lyra Valkyria, Dragon Lee, Diamond Dallas Page, Iron Sheik, Mr. Perfect, Great Muta, Lex Luger, as well as many more. So we will be playing that game, of course, once it is released as well here on the channel. And we have the ratings for Friday's edition of SmackDown. Of course, it was taped. SmackDown averaged 2.272 million viewers on Fox, which is down 11.1% from the previous week. It's also the lowest total audience the show has done so far in 2024. SmackDown drew a 0.62 rating in the 18-49 demographic. That's down 17.3% from last week and matches the lowest rating the show has done in that category for 2024 to date. Now, SmackDown did top all network programming in the key demo, despite the week-to-week -week drop. Now, with SmackDown uh, airing on Friday and WWE running Elimination Chamber the next day in Perth, of course, it was taped a week in advance. So that may suggest as to the reason why that was the case. Now, Rob Fee, you may know Rob Fee from his relationship with Bray Wyatt. Now, Rob Fee has been appointed to a new role, previously serving as the WWE Director of Long-Term Creative since October 2022. The former comic book writer and television producer was instrumental in the return of the late Bray Wyatt to WWE, spearheading the White Rabbit Project. 
Fee has now revealed that his new role in WWE will be Director of Character Development. He tweeted about the changes he has had over the last few weeks. He said, quote, some exciting news. Last year, I moved to Florida to be able to work with talent directly on every aspect of their characters. Today, my title is officially WWE Director of Character Development. So honored to work with our incredible team and the best roster of talent imaginable. So congratulations to him. Now, The Rock is going to be appearing quite often on SmackDown on the road to WrestleMania. The Rock won't just be appearing on the March 1st episode of SmackDown with two further appearances now confirmed. In his recent post about the upcoming episode of SmackDown, The Rock commented on Friday's show being a sellout. He would also include two dates in his original post for March 8 and 15, both of which are Fridays. At the time, The Rock's presence on the shows wasn't confirmed, but now he's been added to the featured superstars listing on the official WWE website. The March 8 episode will come from the American Airlines Center in Dallas, Texas, with The Rock listed alongside the likes of Bianca Belair, EO Sky, LA Knight, Bailey, and Bobby Lashley. The March 15 episode of SmackDown is at the FedEx Forum in Memphis, Tennessee, with The Rock, LA Knight, Bianca Belair, Bobby Lashley, EO Sky, and Jimmy Uso listed as featured superstars as well. So The Rock is going to be pretty busy as he goes into WrestleMania. Finally, we have the ratings for Friday's episode of AW Rampage on TNT. And the Friday, February 23rd episode of AW Rampage averaged 364,000 viewers on TNT, which is up 21.3% from the previous week, which had aired three hours earlier than usual due to TNT's coverage of the NBA All Star weekend. This, though, is still the third lowest audience total Rampage has done so far in 2024. Rampage drew an 0.11 rating in the 18 to 49 demographic. That's up 22.2% from the last week but also is the third lowest rating the show has done in that category so far this year as well as compared to the same week in 2023 rampage was down 11 percent in overall viewers but exactly even in the 18 to 49 demographic it's the third straight week the show has not had a year over year decline in the key demographic which is the first time that's ever happened in the history of rampage but there you go guys this latest pro wrestling news for you be sure to smash a like on the like button be sure to subscribe bottom right hand corner as always let me know your thoughts in the comment section below and i'll speak to you again very very soon hey guys thank you for watching listening streaming or however you come across this video today be sure to click on the video on the right there to watch our next video or click the bottom there to subscribe or the bottom right hand corner thank you very much and i'll speak to you again very soon